Okay, so now that we've gotten our CMS more modular and so that we can change things a lot more easily, we can start to build on it some more and add some new pages to it. Now the first thing I want to do is make a page where users can log in, since we made them able to register, but now they can't actually get into the site. So I've made a new PHP file called login.php, and this is the base code that we're going to be using on all our pages. We're going to require once the functions.php file we're going to print header and then print footer down the bottom. Now if you want to save this off to a separate file, you can, just so that you don't have to type this again every time, but personally I don't mind. So what we want on a login, uh, login page is a form where people can log in. So I'm just going to drop some code in right now. And this is just a basic HTML form. It goes to the same login.php fi file, asks for their username, their password, and has a button that says login. Now, for those of you who just want a visual version, um, here we go. This is all it does. And again, since I'm not going for styling here, this is a really bare page. So that's the easy part, because I'm assuming you have enough knowledge of HTML and forms in order to do that. But what we want to do now is check if that user exists, and also we're going to talk about how to uh, store their user information in a cookie so that they don't have to log in every time they come back. So I'm going to drop in some code here, and we're actually going to put it above the print header function. So put some space between that and the require ones. So we're going to actually start off with if post submit, if they did submit the form or not. Because if they didn't, they may just be coming to this page as a user who wants to log in. So if they posted submit, we're going to check, did they post a username? So a lot of this code you may remember from the... Uh, from the register file where we want to see if they posted a username if not we're going to send an error so I'm going to do the same thing I did there where I'm going to make an array called errors an empty array and then add things to it as we get problems so I'm going to use the array push function push it on to errors and then the error is you did not submit a username you did not submit a username and then close that bracket now I'm going to do the same thing for password, because obviously they would need to type a username and password. Now you don't have to do this, um, because if they did not enter either of these, MySQL would return as zero, zero rows, because there would be no person in the database who doesn't have a username or doesn't have a password. But if you just if they don't submit anything and you get a, and you tell them that the combination doesn't exist, that's not really going to help them. So now we're going to uh, take the username and password and run them through HTML entities. And we're going to uh, encrypt the password the same way we did on register. Now this is because we stored the password encrypted in the database. We can't decrypt that password uh, using SHA1, I believe. Um, I think there is a way to decrypt MD5, but it's not very easy to do. So rather than decrypt their password and check it against what they entered, we're going to encrypt the password that they entered and check it against what we have in the database. Because if they entered the same thing, it would be encrypted the same way, and it would still be able to work. And again, I'm using HTML entities with end quotes so that, uh, that no one tries to inject anything into our database. So now we're going to query the database. Call query, and we're going to do MySQL fetch array, because we only want one row. And in fact, we don't actually even want the row. Uh, I'll show you what we want in a second. Instead of selecting all or even the ID, we're going to select count. Now this is interesting because it doesn't actually return any information other than the number of rows that match it. So we just do a normal query after this. So we want to select from, from users where the name is a, uh, the username. And the pass and the hash password. These are the fields. These are uh, the names we gave to the columns in our database, uh, which I call password. And let's see. Close the quote. Close the parentheses. Okay, we're all set. Now, what this does is it doesn't return any information, as I said. So actually, what it does is it returns it. If we were to print r this um, as count uh, open close parentheses, it returns that as a column. Now, of course, it's not a real column, but that's how we will access it in a minute. So right now, we're going to check if this. Actually, we don't need to check yet, um, but we're going to see. Um, 
what the count of the rows is. So we're, if we're, we're going to say if query count with the parentheses. Okay, close and equal to, or let's say it's not equal to one. Because we, if there's not one row returned, that means that there is not a name or a password with that combination, with the name and password that they entered. If we somehow got two results, I can't help you there. But uh, I tend to do that just in case something really strange happens and we did get more than one result. So if we did only, we did get something other than one result, we're going to array push to the errors. And we're going to say this username or password is incorrect. Now this is not a very specific way to uh, to tell users what they forgot. You can set up a better way um, where you test just their username to see if the username exists and they got the password wrong, or if that username doesn't even exist. But for now, I'm just going to leave it like this. So now we're going to check after all that's done if the count of errors. So if there are no errors, if everything's worked up to now, uh, if that is equal to zero. Now we want to set the cookie. So for starters, we're going to call, make a variable called expire. This is going to be the time when the cookie uh, goes, well, it expires. Um, because they don't last forever on a user's machine. The user, itself, the user himself may have different settings, but uh, we're going to set it to 30 days. So time is a function that will return the number of milliseconds since sometime in 1969. Um, now, if we multiply, if we add 60 to that, plus 60 to that, uh, multiply that times 24, and multiply that times 30, that will give us 30 days. Days, hours, minutes, seconds. So that'll give us when we want it to expire. Now, in order to set cookie, it's not like uh, sessions. I don't remember if we've worked with sessions before in this tutorial. Um, in fact, I don't think we have. Uh, but what we want to do is call a function called set cookie. I'm going to call it tutorial username. Now, I would just recommend calling it tutorial because you want a unique name for your cookie just so that it doesn't interfere with anything else you may have going on with your site. So the first argument is the, what the name of the cookie will be. The second argument is the value of it. And the third is the expire, when it will expire in 30 days. I'm going to do the same thing. I'll call a password, kind of pass the password, and I'm going to give them the same expire date. Now we're going to do header, location, and we'll send them back to the index.php file. Now it's important to note with the set cookie files that you cannot have any information sent out when you call this. So you cannot call it mid-page, which is why I want you to move the print header file down to the bottom of the file. Or not the bottom of the file, but just past all of this information. Now uh, I'm going to go back to our register.php file and I'm just going to copy this so that when someone registers, they'll automatically be logged in. Now, if I remember correctly, here we go. This is where it takes their information. And I'm just going to drop the same thing in, the, uh, which will set the username and password cookies. Except uh, we did use different uh, variables here. So I'm just going to use username, password. And this will do the same thing. Uh, it's password1, I'm sorry. This will set the username and password to the cookie information, and this will and just so you remember, this will send them back to the index.php file. Now, if we want to get rid of a cookie, it's just another function that we can do using the set cookie method. Now, I'm going to put this outside of if set, is set post submit, and the way I'm going to make it able make users able to log out is sending them to this page with a URL such as login.php then pass a variable called logout through get. Now I just drop this in. Um, we're going to set the cookie. Now you can set a cookie that has already been set. You can change its value using this function. And what, it'll, what we want to do is set it to blank, which will automatically make it so that the user won't be able to access the site anymore, but also make it so that the time occurs in the past. So this will actually make it occur um, an hour ago. And what this will do is, since the user's computer will automatically delete any cookies that expired in the past, uh, the cookie will officially be unset. So again, this uses the same set cookie method, so you have to do it before the uh, text of the page goes out. And this will delete the username, the password, and send them back to the home page. Um, in the next video, we're going to be adding 
something to the top of our uh, functions.php header file so that we can tell the user whether they're logged in or not and access the cookies using that.